Welcome back to BlenderDiplom.com. I'm Gottfried Hofmann and in this third installment of our introduction to simulation nodes in Blender 3.6, where I want to finish up the rendering of the particles. And first things first, what we are creating here is points. So here distribute points on faces. And so that means we cannot render them in EV because EV doesn't support the point render type rendering type yet. It will change in the future, but for now, let's keep things simple and switch over to cycles. And here we are rendering our points that we've created. And the second thing is the points do not have a material yet. We have to set it here in the simulation nodes because what we're creating here, or at least here, doesn't have a material by default, but um, since we're outputting it here, we can set it. So set material. And now um, comes the caveat, and that is here in the selector, we can only select materials that are already there. So let me here go to the uh, material tab in the properties editor and on my object here, on my cube object, I'm adding a new slot just to create a new material and let me call it particle, and that's it. I'm not going to use it here on the object, but rather here when I have set materials, let me select particles, and now I'm ready to head over to the shading tab. And here in shading, I turn on render preview, so now I'm in cycles mode. And now the idea would be to shade the particles here based on their age, change the colors based on the age. And we do have the age attribute here. We just need to access it over here. And for that, we will be using the name. That's a common theme in Blender that uh, we're accessing things by name. So let me hover over the name here, do Control C. And now go here, Shift A, search. And what I need is attribute. And here in the attribute node, here where it reads name, I hover and Control V to paste. Now, if I connect Factor to base color, I will see a gradient that it, it seems to be super bright. And the reason for that is it's currently the age is a number from zero to lifetime. So one, two, three, four, five, depending on the frame. And so this becomes super bright because the uh, value we set here as larger than one. We need to normalize the age to a value between zero and one. And that's something we can do here in the geometry nodes. Currently, you see here, um, if I make the spreadsheet a bit wider, H, yep, we see the H, and it's uh, counting upwards. And we need this to be a value between zero and one. So what we can do is we can divide the output here, which is the H, by the lifetime. Let me go here to the node settings and where it reads value, let me call this H. And now let me divide this by lifetime, shift A, utilities, math, and math. Let me place it here between H and the group output, set it to divide. And now I will divide it by lifetime. And now you see the result is a value from zero to one. Yeah, this is perfect for shading. And just for uh, convenience reasons, here in the group output, I will then go to the group tab and currently work the output. Let's call this H021. And now here in the modifier, it reads H021. That means this is, uh, this is just for me to see um, that uh, H goes from yeah, the value range. And now the second thing down here where it reads default attribute, no, sorry, yeah, default, I will put age in here as a default attribute. And that uh, is something I need later on when I want to create a asset from this because the asset will read the default. So now I have everything set and done for shading this. Let me switch over back to shading. And now I will use a color wrap to change the colors based on your age, shift A convert to color ramp, and then here where it is black, I will select some 
very bright, orangish color, orangish yellowish, it looks very bright. Then let me hit the plus sign to create a new stop. That one should be a bright red. And then the third one, let me set a pure black. Now let me switch from linear to ease. Just to make the uh, transition a bit nicer. And I might uh, even move this over a bit. And now I uh, already have a pretty nice fury looking effect. But I think this can become even better if I increase the value here above one, because this is what you had just seen. It was so bright because the value was above one for the um, factor. We can do this here as well for the color. And that is, if I click here in where it meets value, I can set it to two. And now it looks like it's glowing from the inside because this is actually not physically accurate, but now it will uh, return more light than what's entering. And I can do the same thing here for the red. And this is just an old trick from the old days. And it's still working and it's still creating really nice results. The next thing I want to change is I want this to fade out. And at the beginning, I also want this to fade in. To, so it looks a bit like uh, clouds at the beginning. So let me connect the factor here for the H as well to the alpha, that is the transparency. And now it, it starts transparent and becomes fully opaque. Well, of course, I want to convert this with a color ramp to something else. And here now, I do not want to, black means fully transparent. I don't want this to start fully transparent, but rather somewhat transparent, uh, some transparency and um, some opaqueness. So it looks a bit like it starts as clouds or um, smoke, smoky. And then in the middle, I want this to be fully opaque. So I set the value to one. And then in the end, I want this to be fully transparent. So I set the value here to zero. Once again, ease make this, makes it look a bit better. And if I move this over, I take the, the part where it's um, the most opaque is also the part where it is the brightest or very bright. And now for the tips, there's one last thing. And that is the, there is some artifacts here at the tips where you know, we have those black splash splashes and splashes. And this is something that has to do with the way Cycles is rendering. It stops, um, the rays are stopping when they have entered a transparent surface so and so many times. And this is what's happening here. And because the rays are stopping, we don't see anything. You can fix this by going to Render Settings, either a Light Path, and the Transparent Balances, let's set them to a 64 or something like that. And now you see we have a really nice and soft fade out. But also keep in mind that now the rendering of this takes a tiny bit longer, so maybe uh, 32 works also. Well, uh, okay. 60 up for perfect results. So this is it regarding shading of the asset. Now let's create the actual asset pro it. And this is something we can do uh, between where we have two options, how we can do it. Option number one uh, would be to create uh, an asset from the geometry card. That would allow us to drop the asset onto any mesh and uh, it will automatically, automatically become an emitter. This is what I want to do first. So let's call this simulation nodes particle system. And right click, mark as asset. And now let me go to layout and open up the asset browser. And if I go to current file, here is our uh, asset from the simulation notes. You see uh, it's notes. And what I can do is here, for example, I'm at Ecatoros, I drag this over and this works from the get-go. Uh, the the, um, the object uh, it has become an emitter automatically. But if I move this around during simulation, you notice that uh, it's not behaving like an emitter you, you would expect. So the entire particle system moves with the object. Same here. And uh, this comes because the uh, modifier here, the um, particle system is a modifier on the object. And so if we move the object, we are moving the entire everything. I mean, not just the mesh, but also all the modifiers that are on them. You know, like the entire space, the object, the things that are in the objects are living in, we are moving them around. So this uh, is, um, well, the caveat or the problem with this kind of um, asset. And we can change this by dividing it into two parts, a container and an emitter object. 
And this is one I want to show next for that. Let me go back to geometry nodes. Select this here. And now I want to switch, uh, change this so we have a, can use an emitter object. For this, we have Shift A, Input, Scene, Object Info. And this is something we can set directly. So Shift A, and I'm using this. Aquasphere is in the middle, GX. And now if I go here, let me select the Aquasphere. And now the next thing I want to do is I want to click on Relative. And then Geometry goes here. It will um, replace the old geometry. And it will, let's duplicate. Or let's click there, use this here as well. So let me connect this at the end as well. Here, add the one that we had before, control right click and cut it away. I mean it's control right click, cut it away. And now let's move this over and make this also an input. And now we have uh, the second object. And if you play back the animation and move the object around, you'll see that the particles are always creating created where the emitter object is, and the emitter object is also um used, uh, it is shown. So basically that means that the cube has become some kind of particle particle system container, system container, and the icosphere has become like the emitter object can be replaced. So now let me select the particle system container object I have here and right click and mark as asset. And now if I would save this to my personal asset library, I would get an object that is, I would get an asset that I can just drop into the scene. So let me quickly do this and see you in a moment. We are in a new file and this is how the version with the emitter object will show up in the asset manager. It shows the uh, object we chose as a demo emitter and now if I drag and drop this here, You'll notice that it actually ships with the emitter object. So the asset now ships two object, the container and the emitter, demo, demo emitter. Now in the container, I can change the object to, for example, the cube. And now the particles are emitting from the cube. And if I move the cube around, you'll see that the particles are always emitted where the cube is. There is some problems with interpolation. Maybe those will be fixed in the future, but for now, this is as good as it gets. I hope uh, you all learned something in this tutorial series, and if you create something cool with it, please show us down in the comments below. And as always, please do try this at home.